another day, another gaming PC. This is my life and this is what I do for a living. In today's video, we're gonna build a $400 gaming PC and test it in 9 games. As always, we're gonna start with the motherboard. This is an H510MB from MSI, a budget motherboard that is plenty enough for today's build. We paid about $70 for it, and I know that some of you will say that it is too expensive and I should have bought something better, but you gotta understand, the prices are a lot different here. $70 for a new motherboard is a steal in my area. Speaking of steals, we got an amazing deal on this CPU. This i3-10100F cost us $30 and we got it on Amazon in an open box condition. It is one of my favorite CPUs to use in budget gaming PCs because it's cheap and it has a lot to offer for just 30 US dollars. We'll be cooling it with this deep cool stock cooler that we purchased for $6. i3-10100F is a really cool processor and stock coolers like this can keep it below 75 degrees under full stress. We'll be applying GD900 thermal paste on this CPU. There are many other good thermal pastes, but this is the one that I like personally. As for the RAM, I chose this Team Group T-Force Vulkan Z 16GB kit that is clocked at 3200MHz. It will be running at 2666MHz instead, because that is the fastest supported memory frequency for our CPU and motherboard combo. We got this RAM kit on Amazon for $32. So now that we have installed all the components on the motherboard, let's move it out of the way and take a look at the case of our choice. This is a WJ Coolman DT-M2 MATX case that we bought in a local store for $32. I've built many computers in this case, I really love the way it looks and apparently so do the customers, which is why we're gonna build another system in it today. We'll be installing these 120mm red LED fans from Eveski to create some airflow in the case. I paid about $3 for one of these fans and since we have 4 of them, that makes it $12 in total. While we're doing cable management, let's install the storage drive onto this detachable tray. This is a T-Force Vulkan Z 480 xr SSD from Team Group. It is one of my favorite SSDs because it's cheap, it's reliable, and it doesn't slow down over time. We bought it for $28 on Amazon. We'll be powering the system with this Deepcool PF500 power supply. They are extremely reliable and I have never had any issues with them. Also, the fact that these power supplies come with black cables makes everything even better because black color goes with pretty much anything as opposed to the ketchup and mustard cables that can look pretty awful at times. We paid about $40 for this power supply. Whenever I get asked to build a computer for someone, I always suggest them to spend most of their money on useful stuff, like graphics card or a CPU or something. Because when you only have $400 or even $600 in total, you can't be spending a hundred on the case itself. Saving 50 on the case, 10 on the coolers and maybe 10 or 20 on something else will add up and at the end of the day you will have an RTX 2060 sitting in your PC as opposed to GTX 1070 or something. Speaking of which, here is our last component, the graphics card. This is an RTX 2060 from EVGA. We got it locally for about $150. Now since we are almost done building the computer, let me make a summary of how much we spent on each component and how much we're planning to sell the computer for. As we see, we paid about $400 for everything combined. Some of the deals were amazing, some were mediocre, but overall I think we ended up with a quite decent gaming computer. I'm personally a big fan of red and black theme, but you can obviously build it in any way you want. I've built many similar PCs in white cases that actually ended up looking pretty darn amazing. But anyway, now that we are done building the computer, why don't we head over to the benchmarks and see how it performs in games.
Counter-Strike 2. We're running this game on very high settings at 1080p resolution. And as expected, the computer has no problems achieving 100 plus FPS in this game. Generally, you would wanna play FPS games like this on a bit lower settings, but we're mostly CPU limited, so lowering the graphics will not do much for us in this case. If I had to build a computer specifically for FPS games, I would have used a much more powerful CPU, like an i5-12400F or something, but that's not the case here, so as long as we can run any game above 60 FPS at Full HD resolution, I'd say that this PC has accomplished its goal. Next game on our list is GTA V. We're running it at 1080p ultra settings, and right off the bat we are met with 100 plus FPS. Now it did go all the way down to mid 60s at times, especially when there was a lot going on on the screen, but the game still managed to average around 85 FPS while driving around for about 10 minutes. Forza Horizon 5. At 1080p ultra preset with ray tracing set to disabled, we averaged around 68 FPS in this built-in benchmark. Since this game stresses the CPU quite hard, I thought it would be a good idea to showcase how well this stock cooler can cool the CPU while it's being fully stressed by the game. Of course lower temperature is always better, but considering that the room temperature is around 30 degrees right now, I think 75 degrees on the CPU is more than alright. Besides, in most games it didn't even go above low 60s. Atomic Heart here I chose the ultra preset, and to my surprise, we managed to average more than 60 FPS. Now it did go below that quite a few times, but we can always lower the graphics to high or even to medium, so achieving a consistent 60 plus FPS shouldn't be a problem for us in this game. Doom Eternal As usual, this game never leaves us disappointed. At 1080p ultra settings, the computer is giving us a smooth 150 FPS. Not much else to say about it really. Doom Eternal is just one of those games that never stutters and keeps delivering an extremely smooth gaming experience. The Witcher 3. Here I usually set the graphics to ultra and turn SSR down because that specific setting just makes the FPS tank really hard. It basically is supposed to improve the reflections a bit, but even when you take a closer look, you can barely even notice if it's on or not, hence why we have it set to low as opposed to high that it would default to if we were running the ultra preset. And all those things considered, we are getting a solid 70 to 100 FPS in this game. Let's move on to a bit more demanding games, Halo Infinite. At 1080p high settings, we averaged around 70 FPS. I was actually expecting to get a bit less, but I guess I can't complain, the performance of this game exceeded my expectations. The FPS never went below 60, and sometimes it even went as high as low 80s. Red Dead Redemption 2 Now this game got me extremely puzzled, because I've tested hundreds of computers at this point, and every single time I tested an RTX 3060 in this game, it just kept performing worse than every single RTX 2060, which is odd. A GPU that is a generation older should not be outperforming its successor by 15 plus percent. I'm gonna pull up some examples to show you what it actually looks like. Now, I know that these are just a few examples, but I just keep seeing this weird behavior from these two GPUs every single time. RTX 3060s are just keep performing worse than 2060s in Red Dead Redemption 2 for whatever reason. I might make a separate video about this, but for now, let's get back to testing games. Cyberpunk 2077 We are running this game on high settings at 1080p resolution. After doing a few missions and driving around for good 20 minutes, we averaged around 65 FPS. Now we all know that Cyberpunk is a really demanding game, but all things considered, I was quite satisfied with its performance. And in case you wanna have a bit more FPS, you can always enable the LSS or just simply turn down the graphics. Overall, I think the PC performed quite well in all of these games. If you're planning to build something like this yourself, 
I would highly advise adjusting a few things to have a bit more upgradeability in the future. For example, swapping the motherboard with something like B560, Z490 or a Z590 will allow you to run the memory at its advertised XMP speeds. On top of that, these motherboards have a way better VRMs with way better cooling, which will basically run those high-end CPUs a lot better and keep the motherboard from overheating. Also, in case you're willing to go for an AMD GPU, do take a look at RX 5700 XTs or even 6600s and their XT variants. All of these GPUs are a really good value and I think you'll be satisfied with any of these choices. And on that note, let's wrap up this video. Thank you so much for watching and as always, I will see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.